a huge fan of the series The Chosen, which shows the humanity of Jesus in a way we haven't seen before and highlights him and the apostles in a different way. Please welcome Jonathan Rumi. Hi, guys. Wow. I feel like I should bless myself. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like doing this. I've got some water here. He's got I some can water. Help the water if you want. I got some water right here. We were just saying, at least you're not a blonde, blue eyed Jesus, <laughs> finally. Yeah. Joy here already showing her idolization of this version of Jesus that she approves of because the show so far hasn't gotten to anything in the Bible that she disagrees with. She's more concerned about what Jesus looks like as opposed to what he actually taught. Going back to Whoopi, she's showing that she approves of the show and likes the show too because in her own words, she likes that it shows Jesus and the apostles in a different way. Different than what? Biblical? Their first three seasons had more than 600 million wow. views. Yeah. And yes, and was the most yeah. crowdfunded TV series ever. Clearly, you're reaching people. Yeah. Are you finding that people are having a little bit of trouble in separating you from the part? I, I, I already, already just did. did. I already did. <laughs> yeah, yes, the but, but yes. Hit that like button. Let's see if we can get 600 million views. <laughs> Not even close. Now, no doubt, this show has a huge fan base, a lot of views. And I know God is providential and he can work good through even the imperfect. So there are going to be a lot of people, I believe, this show has brought to faith. But that is only if they are true to the biblical Jesus. Many people will see this as their version that they approve of, like apparently the host of The View. This is the Jesus they approve of and they prefer. I was broke, I was out of money, I was out of food, I was out of even government assistance for food. Mm. And the only thing I hadn't done at that point was the thing that was left to do, which was to get on my knees and surrender my entire life yeah. and my career. <laughs> and everything that I had up to that point over to God because there wasn't anything I realized I could do on my own. Were you a believer before that? Yeah, oh. yeah, I was raised with the faith from a child, but it really wasn't until after that moment, um, it was about almost six years ago now, where I just said, Jesus, I surrender myself to you, take care of everything, and that day I received this incomprehensible financial miracle that changed my life, and then three months later I booked The Chosen. Um, wow. wow. Complete surrender to God, Good. That all sounds really good. What he failed to mention, and what many people need to hear, is that part of surrendering completely to God is having a sincere repentance from sin. You need to see yourself as a sinner. And before you see yourself as a sinner and truly in need of a Savior, you won't, you won't profess Jesus as your Lord, the Lord over your life. To a lot of people hearing this, it's going to sound like prosperity gospel. They're going to hear prosperity gospel here if they're not careful. They believe in God now because they believe he will reward them. And he does reward you with eternal life for true, sincere faith, making Jesus the Lord of your life. That's the reward, is eternal life. He does not promise you prosperity and riches in this life. Huge fans of The Chosen. And it's so interesting because this story has been told so many times. There have been so many different renderings. But this one, it, it plays like a, you know, a drama. There's sex. There's humor. There's, there's violence. It has kind of everything you would want. Everything she wants in a show includes sex and violence. Well, in The Chosen, there's not exactly sex. I mean, there's a married couple, which is hopefully trying to show the biblical definition of where sex is been created for. I can relate to Jesus in a way that I never thought I could before. It, it really is relatable. Uh, one of our crew, Zach, came to me months ago and said, I'm Catholic. Mm. You got to watch this show about <laughs> Jesus. I was like, I know a lot about Jesus. And I don't, obviously. Uh, I think but there's always more to learn. There's always more to learn. And, yeah. and, and what that's, you're so profound. I, I think what was fascinating to me is growing up, I always saw the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus, mm. yeah. right? 
and now I go to a black Catholic church and Jesus is, is brown. Uh, you were just saying, at least you're not a blonde, blue-eyed <laughs> Jesus, finally. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think you, it seems that you took such great pains to do that in, in this and to portray him as he probably likely was since this was the Middle East. Jonathan Rumi took great pains to look the way he was born. Hopefully she meant that his show took some steps to cast someone who looks Jewish. Finally, the most important thing to her, Jesus looks like she wants him to look. If you're so concerned about what God chose to incarnate himself in flesh, instead of what his message was, your priorities are focusing on all the wrong issues. You don't need a TV show to be able to relate to Jesus. The creator of you, the creator of all life, the creator of the universe, does not require modern day television to make him relatable. These things are spiritually discerned, not visually, spiritually. Yeah. Right, most people don't know that. Yeah. And he's also Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, so the show explores that uh, the way Judaism is woven into the story in such a beautiful way. Your cast is extremely diverse. Was that important to you and to your director, Dallas Jenkins, mm -hmm. when this was coming together? Was that intentional? Yeah, absolutely. Once again, she's concerned with worldly visual issues that are only skin deep, asking if they were concerned about diversity of the cast. Instead of asking more important questions like, were you concerned about being scripturally accurate? biblically accurate worried more about you need to be worried more about spiritual issues sin salvation if they don't look like me then i don't want to follow jesus unless i see myself in jesus which is just that first step to idolatry where jesus to you is you looking in a mirror and jesus agrees with everything you want him to agree with you've got a bobblehead jesus if he's just nodding his head to everything you want him to. No, God is who he is, not who you want him to be. If you want God to change to meet your desires, that's not God. That's you trying to become your own God. You should change for God, not the other way around. In the clip that we saw earlier, which shows Jesus speaking up for marginalized people, the poor, etc., uh, which is the Jesus that we love. Mm. Um, Told you. Not everyone interprets that message the same way these days. Religion in this country even seems weaponized at times. Mm -hmm. uh, as a man of deep faith, which you obviously are, does that frustrate you at all? You know, in, in that clip, we see Jesus basically taking to task the Pharisees that have essentially perverted the law or, or, or taken the faith and made it about the, the specificity in the letters of the law versus the heart of the law versus the, the community. You know, it was, they were taking great pains to follow the law at the expense of the followers. Mm -hmm. And there was injustice in that. And, you know, anytime you see injustice taking place, um, Jesus is not going to be happy about that. And so I think, I think the fact that we, we see him speaking his mind about it, I think uh, he gave us a really tough example to follow, you know? Yeah in a way that would make any politician very proud. He just more or less talked about the clip of the show that they just showed at the beginning of The View. Jesus was the light of the world, and he called us to be the same. He said for us to be salt, not sugar. We don't tell people what they want to hear. Telling people what they want to hear and making them happy and comfortable isn't doing them any good. True love starts with truth, and salt is truth. It might make you uncomfortable, you might not like it, but in the end, the truth is always better than sweet lies. In the end, truth will lead you to salvation. Sweet, sugary lies will lead you to hell. I'm not going to tell you whether you should or shouldn't watch a show like The Chosen, but read your Bible daily. Pray for the wisdom and discernment that you need to be able to discern what is truly biblical. When you do watch shows, if they're like The Chosen, follow Jesus. Follow the biblical Jesus. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He said to deny yourself and pick up your own cross if you want to follow him. Follow that Jesus. Don't follow actors. Don't follow celebrities. 
or anything else that you may have made an idol that you prefer because it tends to agree with you. The Bible is clear all throughout that we are fallen and have sinful desires that come from the flesh. You should be the one who changes for God. If you agree, hit the like button and subscribe. I'd love for you to stick around and we have these conversations. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you watch it, if you don't watch it, let me know why. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.